Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Heart to Heart. My name is Madiha and today with me I have Sister Masuma Jafar who is a resident alama um, at Stanmore Mosque and she's also got qualifications in counselling. She's counselled hundreds of couples, individuals and families on various issues and topics. Heart to Heart is all about you as the viewer. You can email in at hearttoheart at safiratv.com with your questions, with your problems, with any issues that you might have and Sister Masama is going to try her best to help you tackle them in a practical and religious manner inshallah. So let's meet our guest. Assalamu alaikum Sister Masama. Thank you so much for taking the time out to be on our show. Thank you. Um, so we've had loads of people um, email in to um, ask you questions and give, give, give you their problems and um, issues that they're facing in their work life, in their family life, um, in their relationships. Um, so um, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you the first question that, that um, someone's asked. Um, we have here a 23-year-old male. He has said, um, I'm finding it difficult to find a wife. When I talk about this with my parents, they tell me to concentrate on my studies, get a good job and make lots of money before I even think about getting married. The thing is, I've been thinking about doing a mutah marriage with this girl at my uni, but she's a virgin, so I would need her dad's permission. Everything is so complicated. Please help me understand what is the best thing I can do. Now, I can imagine that this is probably an issue or a problem that you face, um, you hear about quite a lot. Um, how would you help this, this young man um, with um, what he's asked? I think first and foremost, I would um, ask him to sit his parents down and have a frank conversation with them in why he feels he's ready for marriage. Okay. And it's very important that he makes it clear um, that he's not just saying he wants to get married just off the cuff. He's mm. actually thought about it. Um, I think his parents are saying that he should finish his studies. Finish his studies and make lots of money. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, so I think, you know, the things that he could come up with is the fact that, you know, it is the son of the Holy Prophet to get married. Mm -hmm. And there's lots and lots of pieces that talk about early marriages. Um, and the fact that if, you know, he, he may actually find it even easier to concentrate on his education once he is married. Because okay. um, at the moment, a lot of his um, energy and concentration would be on things that are pulling him away from his education. Mm -hmm. So it's important for him to actually, you know, say to his parents, look, it would actually help me with my studies. Mm -hmm. And the point about him making lots and lots of money again, you know, risk comes from Allah. Mm -hmm. And again, we have hadith from the Holy Prophet that says that if um, a person does not marry uh, because of, you know, the fact that they don't have enough money, then they've actually thought negatively of Allah. Okay. So, you know, it's it's important for, you know, him to sort of come up with all these hadiths and actually say to his parents, look, Allah will provide. Okay. It's not that I, you know, and, and the fact that even if you have lots of money, there's no guarantee that that money won't go away once Absolutely. you're married. Absolutely, yeah. So you said earlier um, he needs to think about whether he's actually ready. Yeah. How would he know that he's ready? What, what would you say? It's not just the physical readiness, but it's yeah. the emotional maturity as well that has to come with it. Okay. So, you know, he, he may physically want to get married because his hormones are all over the place and yeah. so forth. But he needs to realize that the, the emotional maturity has to be there as well, okay. that he's actually prepared to be in a relationship, which it will be for the rest of his life and inshallah into akhara as well. Okay. And the second part of his question um, was saying that the, he said, the thing is, I've been thinking about doing a muta marriage with this girl at my uni, but she's a virgin, so I would need her dad's permission. Everything is so complicated. Please help me understand what is the best thing I can do. Now, obviously, that's a completely <coughs> separate issue. Yeah. Um, but what would you say about well, that? In, that in a way, I mean, he's sort of. I think he's screaming out the fact that you know he he his physical needs are so great that he's actually considering a temporary marriage muta. Right. Um, and, you know, he would rather have a nikah, but his parents aren't up for it. Mm -hmm. So again, you know, I think he needs to tell that to his parents, mm -hmm. that, you know, he's actually contemplating mutah here. Mm -hmm. And obviously mutah is allowed mm -hmm. um, But in sometimes Islam. that's quite a difficult uh, topic to approach your parents with. I mean, obviously there's, there's I mean, whether it's right or wrong um, in terms of, of, of you know, there's a stigma attached to yes. it. Um, which, you know, there shouldn't be, but there is um, in, in reality. Yeah. So how would one bring that up with their parents? <laughs> Again, I think, um, you know, we, we do have a very sort of cultural way of looking at Islam. Yeah. Yeah. And like you're saying, you know, Muta is something that most parents are very against. Yeah. Um, but I think he needs to just, you know, ex maybe not sort of say that he um, 
will do muta, but the fact that the option of muta is there, and he mm-hmm. wouldn't, you know, he would rather not go down down that route, mm-hmm. and he would rather have nikah, mm-hmm. um, just just to show his parents that he's thought of all avenues. Mm-hmm. Um, also, you know, although muta is allowed, there is a lot of baggage that comes with it because right. obviously there'll be, you know, um, emotional. Um, he will get emotionally attached to this person, and then that will then follow on to his, you know, relationship when he marries someone else. Mm-hmm. If it, if he doesn't do nikah with the same person, mm-hmm. and obviously he's right, he does need the girl's uh, the father's permission okay. if um, she is a virgin. But there's there's a huge lot of things to consider on that front. I don't yeah. think muta is something that you should go into lightly. Yeah. Um, and I think you know nikah is the thing that is encouraged. And another thing I think he should he can actually ex- um, explain to his parents is that um, most of the marja are united in the fact that if um, you abstain from marriage and you have fear that you may do something haram because of that, then it becomes wajib for you to get married. Okay. So again, you know, yeah. that that's coming from a marja. So it's mm-hmm. not coming from me as your son. Right. I'm telling you, this is what my marja is saying. Yeah. This is what the Holy Prophet is saying. This is what the Holy Quran is saying. You know, mm-hmm. get you know, the Quran talks about the fact that, you know, um, God has provided spouses from amongst yourselves mm-hmm. um, to bring in peace and tranquility. Mm-hmm. Um, and when you have peace and tranquility, again, you know, you, you have, you, you know, you, you're more likely to be able to concentrate better. So exams will become easier yeah. if the concentration is there. Also, if you have a spouse by your side who is um, who believes in you, that will give you so much more confidence Support, when you go for job interviews yeah. and things like that. Yeah. You know, your parents have to believe in you. They have mm-hmm. no choice. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, a, a someone from outside who's come into your life and yeah. who believes in you and tells mm-hmm. you you can do it, that's a huge confidence boost. Absolutely. So, again, going for a job and earning money and things like that will really help, mm. if, you know, if you find the right spouse. So, you said that, obviously... Um, if you're going to fall into sin, it's wajib for you to, to to basically get married. Yeah. What if you're a girl? You know, what if you're a girl and you're going to fall into sin? So, for example, this gen- this gentleman here, he's got he's got the option of of, of doing a mudah. But if you know, if you're a girl and let's say you are a virgin, <coughs> um, what options do you have if your parents aren't letting you get married? Again, the, those conversations have, have to, to happen, happen with, parents, with your parents. Yeah, they yeah. have to. I think you know we we've gone past that stage where. You know, there's certain things you don't talk to your parents about. You, we can't yeah. live like that, especially not in the West. I think mm-hmm. we have to be a little bit more open. Um, and, and parents need to sort of understand that it's really important living in a non-Muslim country mm-hmm. where, you know, um, haram is happening mm-hmm. all over the place. So greater challenges, aren't there? Yes, yeah. much more. And, and, you know, when we when we think of haram, when it comes to things like that, we think of, oh, they're going to go out with someone or, you know, God forbid, they're going to sleep with someone. Mm-hmm. But haram is even that lustful look. Yeah. So, you know, it, it is it is sort of understanding, yes, I have to have willpower and I have to abstain as much as is possible. But if you're, you know, if, if you're getting to a stage where you can't and mm-hmm. you're telling, you know, you need to tell your parents yeah. so that they're aware. And I think as a parent, I need to understand that that is much more important than the worldly thing of, you know, will will they finish their studies? Will they be able to get a job? Will they be, all of these things are so immaterial yeah, yeah exactly and, and and i guess the thing i would say is that if you're at a stage where you're actually ready to get married then you know you that that is the stage at which you should be able to approach your parents and speak to them about it if you think if you feel like you're mature enough to actually get married then these are conversations yeah, that, that conversation, you exactly. should be able to have with your parents yes, so, yeah, because no, there'll be much more agree. you know difficult conversations you'll be having with your spouse <laughs> so you need to be able to have these conversations yeah but it's a matter of whether the parents listen so i think you know the advice should be both to the, the to to the person and the parents as well i think it's really really important mm-hmm. for parents to listen to their children and and you know even if they don't feel that they're ready, if the child is telling you that he's ready, it's again, it's it's his life, it's his choices, mm-hmm. and he'll have to live the consequences of those mm. choices. Okay. Well, thank you for that. I hope I hope that actually answers um, the question that this this young man has um, sent in. Um, so I'm going to move on to the next question. Um, we have um, someone here that has said, uh, "Dear Master Ma, Salam Alaikum. I'm in the I'm in my final year of a pharmacy degree." a degree I did not want to do, but felt compelled to because of parental pressure. The truth is, I want to go abroad to study at a prestigious Hausa Institute, but my parents and indeed my entire family are against me travelling to and living on my own in a foreign country, as I, as I am a young female. <clears throat> uh, I wish I could be left alone to make decisions for myself, instead of everyone dictating to me how to live my life. 
Should I complete this degree and then go abroad? If I do want to go abroad, will I need my parents' permission to do so? I'm really fed up. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so, I mean, okay. So she's doing this pharmacy degree because her parents have told her to, well, yeah. her parents have convinced her to. Yeah. Um, I think that's a... Re- I think that's actually a positive. So look at it from the perspective of that, you know, you're you're doing something that is pleasing your parents. Mm-hmm. And it's fine. It's an, in a final year as and well. And it's in so a final year, yeah, there, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, finish the degree. I think, you know, come from a perspective of rather than looking at it negatively and they're stopping me, they're not living, allowing me to live my life, you know, it, it's not fair. Look at it from a positive <coughs> perspective and they love you so much that mm-hmm. they want to take care of you, mm-hmm. that they don't want anything, you know, bad to happen. And, and they're using their experiences of life to try to sort of, help you not make the mistakes that they made maybe yeah yeah um to have a uh, an education a profession to fall back on is mm-hmm. is huge yeah i mean i know a lot of people that have <clears throat> gone to iran or, or or iraq or you know when they could have gone to syria they've gone to syria and studied in Hoza and then come back for a few months or a year to to, to work and then earn a bit of yeah. money and then go back again. Exactly. So it's always good to have a fallback. Yes, and, and um, if you've got a profession, again, yeah. to earn that money is much, much easier because yeah. you can locum. Exactly. Whereas, you know, if you're working for someone, then it's like you can't take that time and then come back and you've got a job secure as well. Exactly, because so, you, you never know what's going to happen exactly. in the future. Exactly, really. and I think, yeah. you know, you want to be able to stand on your own two feet. Yeah. And again, you don't know, like you're saying, you don't know what's going to happen in the future. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if you get married, if you have kids, you may have to work in, the, in this day and age, I think, you know, mm-hmm. it happens, you know, it, it's such that both the you know the husband and wife tend to have to work to have a decent sort of life which is quite sad but mm. you know that's how it plays out so i think the fact that she's in her final year of a degree um which is you know which will give her quite a lot when she finishes i think she should complete that mm-hmm. um i and would what ask, about what about going you know if she does want to go abroad yeah. she's asked will she need her parents permission yes she to will do so? she will yes she will i mean religious wise yes she has to have her father's permission if he's you know if she's dependent on her father yeah then she will need her father's permission yeah. um i would i would get her to think about why she wants to go to the hosa i mean mm. it seems like she's very interested in religion mm. now the problem is um i find that when in the west um education becomes very academic mm-hmm. um especially if you've gone to university and things and we've got to understand that Hosa is not, okay, it is academic in what you're learning, but it's not supposed to be just kept in the brain. Mm. It's supposed to be things that you take into yourself to sort of better yourself as a person first and foremost before you can then teach others. Mm-hmm. Um, so Islamic knowledge, which is especially taught in Hosa, has a different take to it than secular knowledge that you learn in university. Okay. So if her idea is to go to Hosa because she wants to move on her spiritual path, get closer to Allah, learn about his religion. Um, she started on a wonderful step already. You know, the, her pathway, the fact that she's listening to her parents, the fact that she's studying because they've told her to is, is huge. Mm. That's already set her on the right pathway anyway. Mm. And sometimes we think we'll get to closer to Allah one way mm-hmm. and Allah has another way planned for you to yeah. get closer to him. Yeah, so again, understanding that it's not about the journey but it's the fact that how you you know it's not about how you get to him it's it's the fact that you're getting to him yeah yeah so whether it's through listening to your parents whether it's through you know uh, respect of your parents or whether it's through actually going to hosa mm-hmm. um as long as you're journeying towards allah mm. that's what it's all about mm, absolutely and are there options here in the uk oh for, for sure i mean we um, have um the islamic college mm-hmm. Um, in Wilsdon, mm-hmm. which offers um, BA courses, MA courses, um, HOSA studies. Mm-hmm. Uh, so again, she, if she, you know, and, and they do it online as well. Online as well. I think there's some in Birmingham and various other <coughs> parts of the UK Excuse as well. Me. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. So um, she has lots of options. I mean, she can, while she's doing this, maybe sort of just um, do some online courses mm-hmm. as well or part-time courses. Yeah. She, um, If she's planning to, again, go to Iran or Iraq, the language is going to be a barrier. So maybe she can start learning the language mm-hmm. part-time. Yeah. So then she's not, you know, uh, spending so much of the time just learning the language and she'll actually be learning Islamic knowledge. Mm. Um, there's lots of different things. I th- Also, I think one of the things that I would advise her is to actually get married before she goes because what happens then, one, it, it'll ease her parents mind if she's with someone um, they're more likely to say yes Mm -hmm. Um, to her and her husband will actually start the journey together and i think that's beautiful because then you're on the same path it's like if you've gone and you've studied then to find someone who's thinking the same way is very much more difficult whereas Mm -hmm. if you start on the same you know journey together it's much much easier and it's not easy to go by yourself either i I have a family member who 
um, completed Hosa here and, and then went abroad to, to study for a year um, in Syria and um, she found it very, very difficult. Yeah. It was very um, lonely, um, even though obviously you've got your own, all, all your Hosa students with you. Um, but, you know, she found it very difficult and she actually came back after around 10, 15 days. So, um, you know, it's not as easy no, as, as it, it may sound. Yeah, so actually, think, that's yeah. really, that's and really great advice. And I think sometimes advice. when we're yeah. stopped from doing something, yeah. it feels, it feels greener. really appealing. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. It, and it's sometimes it's not. Like you're yeah. saying, it's like, you know, if you've always had a family around you and mm. then suddenly you're on your own, even mm. if you've got other people, it's not the same as having it's family. Not, yeah. Yeah. So it is very, very difficult to be on your own. And there's so many more, um, I think, um, distractions when you're on your own you know mm -hmm. if you've got someone with you then you can discuss things mm -hmm. you can you know sort of you know um, it's, it's just I think traveling on that same path together is yeah. it's so beautiful to start off a marriage like that yeah, yeah absolutely um, but yeah I think I think it's I think what she needs to I think one of the things that I would tell her is um, <clears throat> that make the near that you want to do this Make um, and, and make sure that your near is, is for the pleasure of Allah mm -hmm. and in the way He wants you to do it, mm -hmm. and that it's not about this, not about the knowledge as much as it's about getting close to Him, mm -hmm. and then let Him plan out your pathway because mm -hmm. He will do it in the most beautiful way. Mm -hmm. And are there any um, du'as that anyone can do to sort of um, not bend the will? But you know, I think I I remember listening to a lecture once upon a time where there was something. Um, that someone wanted to do in the path of Allah and um, the parents were, were stopping them. Obviously, this is a great thing that someone wants to go to Hoza and actually better themselves and learn more about Islam. And I think there was a, uh, I think it was Dua number 24 in Sahifa Sajadiyya about um, for your parents. And apparently, I, correct me if I'm wrong, it, 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 it can um, open the heart of the parents yes, yeah. to, um, to ideas that they might not otherwise yeah consider so I don't know whether that's something yeah I mean she could yeah I mean yeah. and then even even just the simple you know um, dua from the Holy Quran Rabbi Zid Nilman yeah you know a lot of people think that that means yeah you know oh my lord increase my knowledge mm -hmm. but it means increase me in knowledge in knowledge yeah so the knowledge that I'm acquiring mm -hmm. make sure that I'm actually using it to mm -hmm. increase myself to, to yeah. so that there's growth in me so that I'm mm -hmm. become you know I'm getting closer and closer to you mm -hmm. and and maybe if she actually starts I think it's also showing um, that you're not just saying this because it's it sounds like a wonderful idea to yeah. go away and do these sort of things. So to show that she's um, actually thought about it and that you know she she's actually really really wants this. Mm -hmm. If she does start doing part time courses, yeah, if she yeah. starts learning the language, yeah. she's showing her parents that she's you know she's serious actually very it. serious yeah. about yeah, this. It's yeah. not something that she's you know just suddenly decided one day and then next week could be something else. Yeah. Um, because again, we do tend to jump from one thing to another. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And and you know if she does start doing these um, part time courses, online courses, learn the language, one it'll make it easier for her when she's there, and secondly, it will make her realize what it contains. So again, it, you you think you want this, and sometimes maybe it's not something that yeah, you want. I'll give you a bit of a teaser as to what you're going to be facing exactly. when you're there. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you for that. Um, here I have um, a lady who has emailed in and said that uh, my husband and I have been thinking about having children, especially as we have been married for two years now. But I keep thinking to myself, do I really want to raise my children in the West? <laughs> there is so much corruption out there that I don't want to think about bringing another being into this world which is filled with such trials and tribulations. Should we forego having children or move to an Islamic country? Your advice is most appreciated. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um... Wow, there's so many things there. So I, the fact that they're thinking of having children, I think, is really, really good. Um, have it with the near that this is the son of the Holy Prophet, where he tells you to marry and multiply. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's really important to do it with the right near. Mm -hmm. Whether you should bring up a child in such a corrupted land. Um, it's difficult, isn't it? <laughs> well, <laughs> I think if you think about the Holy Prophet, he was born in the period of Jahiliya. Yeah, yeah. So I think, you know, if... The fact that he was, I mean, if, if his parents had decided not to have him, can you imagine? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, um, I, don't, I don't think that is a reason not to have children. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think I think it's about, as parents, what we do at home. Mm -hmm. So as long as we've um, ensured that, you know, we've got a God-focused home, we've ensured that our children are brought up um, with Islam as the foundation, as the focus, with Allah as the focus, um, the foundation is really, really strong. 
um, we've not only just taught them Islam, but we've actually lived Islam. Mm -hmm. um, we've, sh we've, you know, we've shown them role model to them what mm -hmm. submission to Allah means. Mm -hmm. Would you have any sort of practical tips or um, examples of what it means to have, you know, an Islamic home or God fearing? Yeah, I, I think you know? um, it's really important to uh, ensure that all decisions, no matter how minor they are, mm -hmm. are made with God in the picture. Yeah. So, um, you know, even something as simple as um, I don't know which school they go to. Mm -hmm. um, you know, would God be pleased with this school? Um, what are you going to get from it Islamically? How is it going to make you a better Muslim? How mm -hmm. you know things like that, um, things like uh, getting a job, things like you know when they go out and buy something. It's like, do you you know is this a sraf? You know, can you can you okay this? Mm -hmm. and, and getting the child to actually think about the fact that they will stand in front of the Creator one day and have to explain every single one of their actions. Mm -hmm. I think that's really, really important. Getting them to making sure that the child knows how to make decisions. Mm -hmm. So teaching the child decision making skills from a very young age, um, and also allowing the consequences to play out to their choices that they make, the decisions that they make. Mm -hmm. A lot of the times, as mothers, we we don't allow the consequences to play out because we want to save our child. Them, yeah, yes, and yeah. we want to keep them in this little cotton, you know. Yeah. But all that we've kept them in, and, and it doesn't work then because they never learn that you know actions mistakes. have consequences. Yeah, yeah. So it's really important. <laughs> even even something you know as little as that they, you know, they got up, they wouldn't wake up in the morning, so they were rushing around and they forgot their lunch. Mm -hmm. Let them go hungry that yeah. day. They, they've got <laughs> yeah. to understand, you know, yeah. if um, and and things like again, God focused home, where um, if it is a wiladat or a wafat of a masamin, yeah. yeah. then we are going to mosque. It doesn't yeah. matter whether you've got an exam the next day. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter that you haven't done your homework. Yeah. It doesn't matter that you're tired, mm -hmm. you're going to ask no ifs and buts about it. And what about before they've had the actual child? Is there anything that they can do um, to start <laughs> implementing and inculcating that into their, you know, th them as a couple, them as a home? Yeah, for sure. I mean, if, if they the themselves, yeah. yeah, if they themselves have not done that, yeah, um, if they themselves are not God focused, their children won't be. And it's too late to try to become God focused when your child is there because. It, it, you know, yeah. there's too much happening then. Yeah. So it has to be something that's ingrained in you, mm -hmm. and it's something that you've worked at as a couple. Mm -hmm. So you know, it and and, and you know, I, I I remember it's like we used to have a rule in our house that if God has dictated something as wajib, then we have to do it. If mm -hmm. God has dictated something as haram, then it's not up for discussion. Mm -hmm. I, how can I tell you it's okay when God's told you it's not? Yeah. What's the point of us discussing it? There's mm -hmm. no point. If you, if God has said no, then no. Okay. Um, but everything else is up for discussion. Okay. And that <coughs> sounds an easy thing to say, but it really isn't because sometimes your children will come up with something which culturally you find very, very mm -hmm. difficult, yeah, but yeah. Islam hasn't dictated on it. Yeah. And then you have to be... What's an example of that? Or something on your, in your mind that you're, <laughs> that you're thinking of? Um, uh, for example, tattoos. Okay. For example, a boy having long hair yeah. or earrings, anything that you know culturally you feel a bit uncomfortable with. Yeah. But it's not something that God has said, haram, you know, it's yeah. haram. Okay. And at that point, you have to, as a parent, be open to discussion and actually be, um, you know, have those conversations without letting your cultural bias come into it. Mm. So it's okay for men to have earrings then? Yes, Islamically, <laughs> yes. Um, whether, you know, okay. but it's a discussion you have to you have, have with have. your child yeah. Yeah. and explain to them why you're not comfortable with mm. it. And, and your child might turn around and say, yeah, but mm -hmm. God hasn't said no. Mm. So and they'd be right. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So okay. I think it's really, really important. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, before you even have the child, you know, we need to sort ourselves out. Yeah. yeah. And then obviously once, the, once you're pregnant, then, you know, you need to ensure that the child is getting all the positive vibes, all the spiritual vibes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, reciting the Holy Quran, uh, making sure in, you're in a state of wudu, all of these mm -hmm. things will help the child uh, when, you know, with uh, the God focusedness right. from beforehand. So it, right. it doesn't happen once the child is born. It has to happen from way, way, way before. Mm. And this person also said, should we forego having children or move to an Islamic country? I mean, is that something that's practical? Get up and go and move your whole <laughs> you life? You can do. Um, I think when they're young, it's much easier. Do you think those um, countries are any less corrupt? <laughs> exactly. That, that's what I was going to say. I mean, yeah. you still have, you'll still have corruption is to a point there you'll yeah. still have non-islamic things happening they'll still have peer pressure they'll still have <laughs> everything that they're you know it, it's just outwardly yeah it's it's more islamic so yeah. you know you'll have for example hijab will be much easier in an islamic country mm. but that doesn't mean that boyfriend girlfriend issues aren't there in the yeah. islamic country yeah. or drugs or, or drugs or alcohol yeah, yeah, yeah things yeah. like that so there are certain things that will be easier outwardly uh -huh. Uh -huh. but i think it's it's about getting the child 
um, inwardly to be God focused, <clears throat> and that can only happen if you yourself are, if your fam, you know, if your household is, mm -hmm. and then that way, then wherever they are, mm -hmm. they'll always be God focused. And and I think it's important to have Muslims all over the world. Yeah, because we need to have a presence all over Absolutely, the world. Yeah. I mean, when the twelfth Imam comes, he's not just going to be concentrate on the Islamic countries; Absolutely, he's going to concentrate yeah. on the whole world. Mm -hmm. So it's important to have his soldiers all over the world. Mm -hmm. And also, you can have them in an Islamic country when they're young. But when they go to university and they want to come to the West, are mm -hmm. you going to move again or are you going yeah. to send them on their own, which is quite dangerous? Yeah. Yeah. And actually, I found when people are quite cocooned in a, in a super Islamic environment, which is, which is fine and great, and then they're sort of let out into the big bad world, then they sort of go the opposite way yeah. um, and you know, go crazy with the I don't know, uh, I don't know, alcohol or freedom or just whatever it is. Yeah. Um, so I think it's and, important in a globalized world yeah. to kind of give a child or a person and a sort of holistic kind of idea of what what the world contains and what it has. Yeah. And I mean, that's that's very, very true. And I think that's because Islam hasn't been taught to them and they've never been questioned about Islam. Because mm -hmm. again, when you're living in an Islamic country, mm -hmm. you just take it because that's what everyone else believes. Yeah. When you're living in a non-Islamic country, mm -hmm. You know, your your faith actually becomes stronger because you're yeah. going to you have to answer to why you believe what you yeah, believe and absolutely. why you're doing what you're doing. Yeah, yeah try and hold so, on to it. Exactly. Yeah. So I think that actually it makes your faith stronger to yeah. a certain extent, yeah. rather than you know if the foundation has been there. And the other thing that you said is we do live in a globalized world where, with the, with you know with the event of the internet, the rest of the world is at your fingertips. Exactly. So even if you're trying yeah. to keep them, yeah. you know, in an Islamic country, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're not yeah. going to know what's happening. Or well, they're not going to be exposed yeah. to, to the West and Western ideas of what's yeah. right. And, and and a lot of the times, it, the grass always looks green on the other side. I remember when we moved to Qum, um, you know, and we used to tell people that we've come from London and we're living in you know in Qum, and they're like. Mm. Are you crazy? What's wrong yeah. with you? Because yeah. to them, they couldn't understand why you would leave the West because it's yeah. supposed to be such an amazing place. Yeah. And they really didn't appreciate what they had, yeah. whereas we did because we came from the West yeah. and we, we could see the flaws in the West yeah. and we could see the beauty in, 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 you know, in living in, a, in an environment where everything revolved around God, mm -hmm. open, you know, outwardly. Mm -hmm. So I think also, you know, the, the gra like you're saying, the grass always is greener on the other mm -hmm. side, so be very careful of that as well. Okay. All right. Thank you for that. Um, so the next question I have is, uh, I, am, I am a sister in my late 20s and the current job I'm doing is ruining my life. It's not so much the job as it is the people, especially as I have to work closely with someone who is being a bully. I can't handle her anger and aggression and she seems to take it out on me. It's really affecting my health, my performance at work, relationship with my children and making me dread coming into work. When I tried to present this issue to a senior manager, it appeared as though I was the one with the problem. Should I should I leave this job and seek new employment? It's quite tough, isn't it? It's mm, quite tough. It is. Yeah, uh, I think bullying is is, yeah. is so. You know, when we think of bullying, we think of children, but mm -hmm. it happens. You know, yeah, yeah. to everyone, mm -hmm. um, and it, it's really sad. And you know, there's so many different ways bullying can happen. Um, as she says she's talked to management. I mm. think maybe actually, I would encourage her to actually send something in writing mm -hmm. with actual evidence as well. Mm -hmm. So examples of where she feels that she's being bullied. So yeah. there's a paper trail now, yeah. um, which is important. Also, um, there's the National Bully Line, um, which she can get in contact with, which mm -hmm. gives you know um, advice on how to handle things like this. Mm -hmm. um, you know, m it may just be having you know a facilitated conversation with this person. Mm -hmm. This person may not even realize what they're doing is bullying. Yeah. So you know, and it's it's not fair to ask her to have that conversation if she feels so threatened by this person. Mm. So it, it may you know it may need to be facilitated. Yeah. By someone yeah. in the workplace, um, you know, senior management and so forth. Um, but it's sad that it's affecting her so much that it's actually affecting her home life, her relationship mm. with, she said, her children, right? Her with children, her yeah. I think I think that's the thing. If if, if something's bugging you at work or you're stressed during the day, yeah. then you probably come home and, and take it out her. on the people that are sort of nearest and dearest to you. Yeah. Um, the issue is, I guess, um, you know, not everyone is as assertive enough to kind of hold their own. But if if they had a facilitated um, meeting. Um, with this, with the senior manager who didn't obviously do anything about it, then would you suggest that they escalate it higher to the to the next sort of level up? Or? Yeah, and if it's affecting her so much, then yeah. I think she needs to. I think she needs to try all avenues mm -hmm. before she actually decides to leave the job because she says she's happy in the job. It's it's the people that mm -hmm. she's uh, she's not 
happy yeah. with. And I guess sometimes it's not as easy as just leaving the job because you might not be able to find another one. This one, yeah. this one might give you flexibility. Um, but do you have any sort of tips or advice of how someone can um, be more sort of assertive or, or, or sort okay. of I think this hold comes, their own? Yeah, or? I think this comes back from your um, to your own concept of self esteem and self confidence and and what you think of your own self. Yeah. Um, and I think that um, can be. I think just knowing that the creator of the universe chose to create me mm. is huge. Yeah, that's nice. It make you know it. He who created everything chose to create me. Yeah. So who are you to tell me I'm nobody? Yeah. Who are you to put me down? Yeah. So just m- making myself realize mm. that I am special, mm-hmm. and it doesn't matter what anyone else says or does, mm. because again they've been created by someone else, mm-hmm. by, by God as well. Yeah. So they're no better than I am. Yeah. Um. So building my own self confidence by. Um, realization of you know things like that you know building my relationship with God um, will re- will also help because then you don't feel alone mm. so you know you know that he's there maybe sort of you know going into um, this place um, to, to the place of work with uh, God by your side knowing mm. that he's by your side I know he is but you know we, we know it but we don't know it we don't know yeah so you know even little things like being in wuzu Reciting a two rakat salah before you go, you know, your day starts. Ya Allah, let this day go well. Please help me, mm-hmm. you know, give, you know, m- let it go well. Make mm-hmm. make my day go, you know, make me be able to stand up to for myself. Mm-hmm. Let them not bully me. Um, maybe you know, doing a, a mantra where you sort of, you know, do um, you tell Allah, you know, okay, I'm going to recite a two rakat salah at the end of the day if, if the day's gone well. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, or if the week's gone well, I'm going to keep a fast or you know recite more Quran or anything and again that helps your spiritual growth and also it it you're sort of bargaining with God yeah. which which helps as well but you know each time anything happens sort of just know that God's by your side and maybe not also taking it all on so when this person is saying things which mm-hmm. are really nasty mm-hmm. realizing that's their issue not yours yeah okay perfect yeah. great well I think that's the end of um, our show today thank you so much for tuning in and thank you so much to Sister Masama Jaffa as well for all her help and advice. As we said earlier, you can email in at heart at com with any questions, issues, problems that you may be facing at work or at home and Sister Masama will try her best to um, help you with, with your issues. Thank you very much. Salam alaikum.